Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Uh, what we do here on this channel is we review the auction listings for uh, 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series line cruisers uh, for yeah, vehicles that are listed on uh, cars and bids, uh, bring a trailer, or even just online. And we go through them and identify some of the common issues that we frequently see on these uh, land cruisers. Uh, and we do this in order to yeah, better prepare you uh, and better inform you so that um, you can make a better decision should you be in a position to buy one of these great, great vehicles. Uh, so I am not an expert. I don't know everything. However, I have owned several of these. And so my experience is kind of, you know, jaded by that. Um, so yeah, what we're going to study today is a 2006 uh, Toyota Land Cruiser UZJ100. Uh, so this is the uh, the second to last year that the 100 series Land Cruiser was sold here in the United States. Uh, so this has the uh, five speed transmission. It's got the, you know, kind of like the little, it, it's not much, it's like what, five horsepower, a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit more horsepower than the previous years. It's got the better four pin front differential. Um, yeah, this is kind of the one to get. Sometimes some of these uh, 2006, 2007, especially in the Land Cruiser variant, not the LX470, they'll have the automatic high control. So we'll kind of keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, this color in these photos. So good job for the uh, photographer here. This looks this looks great. All right, so let's go through the high level details. Um, so this is located in San Jose, California. Uh, it's got 261,000 miles, which is yeah quite a bit for a 2006. Uh, let's see, we're in 2023, so yeah, it's got you know 17 years, and yeah, that's that's a lot of miles. Um, let's see, it's got the five speed locking center differential galactic gray mica. So that's that beautiful kind of, yeah, it's, it's a good looking color, especially in this uh, sunset. Uh, it's got some 17 inch method wheels. It's got a yeah, pretty big three inch uh, Dobbinson's lift. It's got some, you know, kind of <laughs> semi ridiculous awning hanging, uh, hanging off the side, depending on your perspective. It's got a pro speed roof rack, um, yeah, kind of the same styles like a Prinsu. And uh, let's see, anything else looks like it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's kind of it as far as, um, yeah, original equipment. Let's see what else here. It's got some aftermarket Bluetooth connectivity. Um, I know there's some like dongles you can plug in behind the unit. Um, yeah, so I'd assume this has nav. We'll, we'll see that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So the current owner acquired the truck in July of 2020. There are so many of these like COVID and post COVID purchases. This is insane. I, I wonder if this is like really what drove up, you know, prices and everybody, you know, getting outside and doing all that is yeah. Pandemic stuff. But, uh, let's see. So now it's offered by the seller on behalf of the owner is now offered by the seller on behalf of the owner at no reserve with a clean California title in the owner's name. Yeah, so good job uh, to them for uh, yeah, going no reserve. It's good to see that. It looks like in the bulleted list here, we've got timing belt and water pump replacement in February of 2022. Uh, yeah, this is probably, you know, had enough miles to go through. Yeah, two, three, maybe even four timing belts. All right, so finished in galactic gray mica. That's the code 1E9. Uh, let's see, it's got a power sunroof with vinyl graphics and yeah, it's got the rack, the awning, um, rear mid flaps and, and let's see what else. Uh, the Carfax, Carfax report lists minor damage in April of 2021 and the seller notes the left doors were refinished as a result. So minor damage and the left doors were refinished, meaning like repainted. So that's like this side. Um, just looking at it yeah we'll get into it but just looking from here and it could just be the the shade uh but this rear quarter on this driver's side does seem a little bit more blue and as you move to the front it feels a little bit more gray uh that could totally just be the sun the sun's over here so that would make sense but yeah we're gonna you know keep an eye on that um, let's see, exterior blemishes include paint chips in the front end and rocker panels. Yeah, so with 260,000 miles, you'd expect lots of uh, yeah, uh, rock chips and scuffs and faded trim and yeah, all the normal things that uh, an almost 20 year old and 200 and something thousand mile Land Cruiser will have. So this has 285.70 Wild Peak uh, all terrain tires. Uh, it's got some ventilated discs that are yeah, aftermarket and it's got a um, Chell Taylor rear sway bar. Uh, end links and yeah, it looks like the f factory active height control has a suspension has been removed. So like we mentioned, um, yeah, a lot of these came with that. It would be a real gem had it not. Um, but yeah, it looks like this one's had it removed and you can kind of see it peeking there in the center console. 
Um, so you might end up with like a warning light on the dash. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we get a photo of that. Uh, let's see, anything else? The center console armrest is discolored and the third row seat upholstery is indented, yeah, probably from just having been stored. And the tire pressure warning light is illuminated. Just get that fixed. It's not that, not that big a deal. All right, uh, let's see, timing belt and water pump were replaced in February. We went over that and yeah, let's go ahead. It looks like nothing else uh, is worth noting. Um, yep, so let's go take a look at the Carfax. Uh, so there's the minor damage, you know, being listed up top. It's got three owners. Um, let's take a look and see if there's any mileage issues. Originally uh, sold, looks like out of Calif or Colorado, and then went to, yeah, was in Arizona, but back to yeah, Nevada. Um, kind of all over the place for, for service. Um, so, yeah, looks like mostly in Colorado and Nevada for the first 100,000 miles and, let's see, four or five years. Yeah, so that had some pretty heavy usage in the first you know, the first owner. Yeah, so let's see, it's 2006, so we're coming up on yeah five six years old, and it's already at yeah 150,000 miles. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of miles. So coming up on 10 years, and yeah 206,000 miles. Yeah, all in kind of like the Reno area. Um, so seeing that as far as corrosion goes, that's probably going to be, yeah, a good thing relative to other States. It's not the worst, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, as far as corrosion goes, but yeah, this mileage continues to tick up. I still haven't seen like another owner. So there's finally, so the first owner had it for, uh, let's see, 13, 14 years and put 230,000 miles on it. Yeah, that's impressive. They got their money's worth. If you're going to buy one of these Lion Cruisers and buy it new, this is the, that's the way to do it. And then subsequent to that, it uh, looks like it stayed in Reno for, what, maybe like a year. And then, you know, the current owner picked it up um, and, and, let's see, brought it to California. And that's when the damage happened. And, yeah, here we are. All right, so don't forget, you can check and see. I know they you know, talked about timing belt service. Um, I just searched timing. It's not here in the Carfax. So um, I do see a lot of this service was done by uh, a dealer in um, Reno. Um, so be sure if you're interested in this, plug this into the Toyota website and the maintenance history website and, and see what records they have there. Relatively good Carfax. Uh, let's go ahead uh, and look at the photos. Let me go full screen for your viewing pleasure. And yep, I, I dig this color. It's, uh, it's, it's really great. <laughs> um, yeah, just noting the discoloration on these uh, trim panels. Again, that's very standard for, uh, yeah, for these. The method wheels, they look pretty good on this. Uh, yeah, I like the running board delete. Um, they would look good with just a, you know, a little, little slider. I don't think you need like as beefy of a sliding slider, you know, based on how most people use their trucks. Um, but yeah, a little, little something, I don't know. It's probably not necessary for the, the way most people use them. But, you know, one thing on these 100 series, these rocker panels and the 80 for that matter, those are made out of steel, out of metal. They aren't plastic like the, uh, um, the 200 series. So you, you know, do want to make sure you have a little protection if you get into, you know, something tight and, and kind of narrow there. Although there's lots of other stuff hanging down here to get hung up on. Um, but yeah, overall, yeah, it looks pretty good. This front shot here, going back to that, um, you know, and keeping an eye on that, that damage, everything looks pretty straight. Gaps seem pretty normal. Um, yeah, the little valence panels are, yeah, are fine. Um, these headlights, this was brought up on a previous auction. These headlights for the 2006, 2007, these are plastic housing, so they, they can and do fade. Um, but yeah, I like the front end on these, um, yeah, these 2006, sevens, yeah, quite a, quite a bit. Uh, you can see little hints of the, like a diff drop. Um, the skid plate's been dropped down, you know, to accommodate that. But yeah, appreciate the different lighting conditions in different locations of the photos. Uh, and you can see this kind of discoloration in this trim panel and that centerpiece, you know, kind of, you know, going, going everywhere. Uh, rear bumper, just normal, normal scratches. Uh, looks pretty straight. Doesn't look like it's been, you know, bent up and kinked in one side or the other. Um, yeah, yeah, looks looks pretty good. And the rear end on these, they they look a lot better than the other yeah, ninety eight through yeah two thousand five in my opinion. I like I like these tail light assemblies. Um, rear spoilers, a nice touch. Yeah, it's got a good good profile. 
Yeah, so I'm assuming that when this damage happened, they repainted these. That's why they're kind of the center part's not uh, faded out. Um, yeah, I wonder what the nature of that that damage was. It's it's a little frustrating. I think if I were, and maybe they're in the the library here of photos, but I would I would include the photos of the damage as somebody who's you know interested in a vehicle. Yeah, I would I would want to see what the damage was, but maybe they're not available. But overall, yeah, this looks great. I love, yeah, the, the photos are high quality, which helps, but yeah, also, you know, great, great lighting conditions. Ooh, some nice rolling shots. Look at that. <laughs> I, those are probably like replacement bulbs, kind of like the blue, you know, the bluish hue type. Um, yeah, I think these are all halogen lights, but it's a, it's a good looking truck, good color. I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> So what do you what do you think? Do you do you all like this color? It's probably one of my favorite two hundred series colors. Um, you know, it doesn't stick out too much. It's not super flashy, um, and I I like the like the dark slate metallic on the uh, the eighty series too. This kind of like reminds me of that. Looking at the, you can see there's a little like color change. So this is like a light, you know, lighter color. Although it's kind of hard to tell. So it's like lighter through here, more yellow, but then it's kind of like a darker gray, like right here on the front driver's side fender and then like also in the door. So that, but there's definitely like a line through here. I have no idea if that has anything to do with the damage, um, but just something I'm seeing and it could just be the, the paint. That looks like a little ding in the passenger front door. Um, yeah, otherwise looks looks pretty pretty straight. Not not really any big noticeable noticeable other dings that I've seen. Roof maybe, and especially here on the spoiler, uh, being in that um, well, I guess it wasn't in the California sun, but maybe in the Nevada sun, a uh, little oxidized and, and faded there. How cool would this be if there was no sunroof on it? All right, moving here to the front. Yeah, you can see all the rock chips. Uh, yeah, never been, you know, touched up. It's... Yeah, there, there's a lot of them. All right, some detail shots here of the, the driver door. Yeah, it looks, looks good. And it's funny how this trim, the center section, the, the paint kind of fades. Each one's kind of different. It's like a fingerprint. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd assume this is a scratch. Um, yeah, these trim pieces, they've got like adhesive and they've got some clips. Um, I'm also noticing that the front mud flaps are missing. Um, if you're going down gravel roads, I would for sure have these. I know they're probably not there because the tires are too big. Um, but yeah, when you go down gravel roads, you kick up a bunch of shit and it yeah, I can um, basically sandblast, um, yeah, the underside of these rockers. You can, you know, almost, yeah, you can almost see that already happening here further down in the door. Um, there's maybe a little color difference that you can see. So this is probably to do the, the, the damage. And, yeah, it seems like it's a little wavy there. Let me, do we get a good sh side shot? No, we don't. Sorry, epile epilepsy warning there. Um Yep, but yeah, def definitely a paint difference between the um, yeah, like the rocker and and the door. All right, moving here to the back looks like a um, a, you know, scrape from like a garage door. Uh, and another one down here. Um, yeah, other than that, looks looks pretty clean there in the back. Just more scratches, minor minor stuff. Uh, factory hitch, yeah, it looks not rusty. More scratches on the um, the spoiler. Yeah, overall, overall, pretty cl pretty clean for the age. Looking at these headlights, you can see these little micro cracks. Um, that's a pretty good sign that they've for the for purposes of selling this, they've gone through and put. You can see like that little yellow hint, uh, tint. Um, they've probably gone through and put one of those, you know, like a polish or something to kind of clean them up. 
Uh, so just be expected that these are going to likely, right, not 100%, but likely going to yellow out and get kind of hazy, you know, here in like a month or two, maybe even longer. Sometimes depending on the kit, you know, it could last a little bit longer. Um, you know, if they clear coated the, the headlights, it can last even longer. But anyway, that's that's my thought after having done this type of uh, yeah, polish work on, on previous Toyotas. Yeah, the headlights probably look normally yeah, a little worse than that. So yeah, expect them to look like that in just a couple months. Um, yeah, seeing some more rock chips. I wonder if they like drove right behind somebody. That's crazy to get that many rock chips, you know, like on the valence panels in here. These aren't rusting out because this is plastic under there. Whereas those little, you know, valence panels underneath the headlights, the, those are metal. But yeah, more, more evidence of that. <laughs> From this perspective, it looks like a, like an 05 Highlander. Not so many rock chips on this side, on the, on the passenger side. It's got a rear view camera that would have, you know, come, come in these later years. It's not available in the early, uh, 100s. Yep. Good looking wheels. You know, they match the paint pretty well. Yeah. Looks good. It's a lot of, a lot of detail. You could look at the date codes. I'd, I'd presume they're pretty new. All right, moving to the interior. Yeah, relatively for uh, you know clean looking carpet. I got all the stickers here. Um, yeah, nothing going on at least in this door jam. Um, yeah, looks looks fine. Little wear on this uh, this driver's side bolster on the outboard side. Uh, seat belt looks kind of like kind of cringy and gross. <laughs> they all they all get like that, and you have to feed them back in to get them to go up. Um, I'm looking at these bolts here just to get an idea as to maybe how they did the paint work, whether they painted it on the vehicle or yeah, or took the doors off. Yeah, w without a detailed shot, you're, you're not going to be able to know. So that if you know, that, if that, I, although this is the wrong side, but yeah, if you're interested in that, that's definitely something to ask. Um, yeah, these later ones also would have had you know the the seat airbags or the airbags in the seat. Um, it's a good safety thing. Um, I don't know. The leather looks hard, but you know, maybe it's a little bit softer than how it looks. <laughs> All right. Steering wheel looks good. It's not cracked. It's, this looks original. It looks nice and smooth. Um, yeah. So again, a good indication that this wasn't out in the sun all the time. You know, also, you know, we talk about the, um, the seatbelt receptacle. It doesn't look faded. Same thing with the leather on the shift handle, you know, looks as it should. Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So this had the, um, height control, um, as well as the, uh, yeah, the nav. Yeah. So like the, the one to get is the, the, yeah, the one without HC. And then if you're lucky, you can find one without, without navigation, but yeah, those are, those are pretty rare too. Yeah. looks like a really clean interior. Well detailed, um, 261,187 miles. Yeah. Good detail shots of the, of the steering wheel and the, uh, all the instrument cluster and all the all the um, yeah, center console. Uh, make sure this uh, center diff lock works. With uh, you know, it's just something that can kind of go out on these if if they're not actuated. And same thing, be sure it shifts down into low range. Um, yeah, easily if you get a chance to take this for a drive before you bid. It's got the seat heaters, but yeah, overall, this all looks pretty clean, well kept. Um, yeah, just some kind of staining from somebody's arm. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty clean. Um, you can see a little, little, you know, crud on the seats, but yeah, it's not a, not a big deal. Yeah, if you're curious, I think these, um, you know, you're with this button, you're able to have kind of two sets of tire pressure monitors. Um, the little sensors that are in the wheels. So yeah, so you could basically have like a, you know, a winter or a street set and, a, and an off-road set of tires. Kind of a nice touch. The, uh, the LX570 that I had also had that. Uh, go America. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, I believe this is going to be like an aftermarket unit. I don't, I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think this is a Toyota thing. Um, 
so in order to do this, there's probably something like in the center console or yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's a Toyota deal. A uh, little, little stain on this little rubber heel protecting thing, but yeah, for the most part, the carpets look pretty, pretty clean. Looks like a little stain there. Um, this type of like rest on this on the, the feet that's pretty normal. Not sure what causes that, but uh, door card looks good. The little you know fabrics over the speaker cover still, so that's that's great to see. A uh, little wear here on this rocker panel where somebody's dragging their feet. And then, oh, back to the seatbelt thing where I talked about, you know, like having to like feed it back in. Yeah, you can see it's like hanging here. That's how they all pretty much are. Um, underneath these little sill plates, uh, you can see a little like paint missing. Um, that's a very, you know, like they can end up, you know, they kind of rub and um, wear down the paint and you can end up with like a little rust down there. All right, looking at these bolts, let's take a better look. Yeah, it looks like those have been turned, so I'd assume they you know, just pulled off this whole hinge assembly when they did the paint job. Um, yeah, that's kind of my, my guess there, just looking at those. I mean, they look like they've been turned. Yeah, pretty sure they have. But it's being disclosed, so it's, it's all good. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, lots of good detail shots. Good job on the uh, interior photography here, leaving yeah, not a whole lot, um, yeah, a whole lot unknown. Little little stain or something here, something got underneath the, the sill. And then, yep, looking at this door jam, you know, not seeing any paintless dent repair, you know, holes or caps or anything like that. Yeah, those door, car, door cards look good. Um, the nets are a little saggy. That's to be expected. Yeah, very, very clean inside. It looks like some maybe some scratches here in the um, in that passenger side rear seat. But yeah, leather in the second row looks good. So that looks softer, doesn't it? That just looks softer than the front row. <laughs> Oh, there's the scratches. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe it's a milkshake. What do you think? Leave a comment. What do you think got spilled down here? <laughs> yeah, pretty clean carpets. Pretty, just Yeah, pretty well done. All right, so the color here in the rear, this looks off. So it looks like these were sourced from a different vehicle. I mean, those are different color. Yeah, I mean, like looking here, yeah, very, very different. Um, yeah, so they probably, they might have... I wonder what year had kind of this different color. That's something to look at the brochures and see, um, you know, if there was, this is kind of like a light gray, this is a dark gray. Um, you know, what, what year these seats might have come out of. Huh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, rear cargo area looks looks good. Not seeing anything goofy going on in the door jams. Um, it's kind of cool that it's got the the covers right so these covers go down into the floor uh they've got them for both sides that's that's good to see and yeah definitely appreciate how much easier it was on the 100 and the 80 series to get these seats out of the truck if you needed them out whereas the 200 yeah it's a bit of a pain rear carpet looks pretty good um i didn't notice these little spots on the seats Although they wouldn't have been down at that point anyway. So it looks like just some, you know, I don't know, some overspray or some pain or something. I don't know. Um, you know, the telltale here on the back, that's a good looking fastener. So yeah, I wouldn't expect corrosion to be an issue um, yeah, on this truck just based on that. But yeah, you know, never, you never know. Uh, let's see. I feel like it's missing one of the clamps for this air box. I feel like there should be one there, but maybe it's one, two, and then there's like one over here and then one on this corner. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about then. <laughs> you get what you pay for here, folks. Uh, all right. So we've got a, a timing belt sticker. It's, am I reading that wrong? It says 270 miles or 270,000 miles. How many miles does this thing have? I thought it was less than that. 261. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, probably need to ask this guy about his time machine and figure out <laughs> how he did this. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, 
Yeah, maybe they just got the mileage done. Maybe that's what, well, that's not when it needs to be done. That makes no sense. Because if it was just done in February of 2022, it should have, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 miles left. So I don't, I don't know what, what they're thinking there. Maybe they meant to put 260. I don't know. Um, oh, so <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this, uh, this hydraulic line's not connected. So this is where the AHC, um, pump sits. So yeah, all of these connectors, that's what all that crap's there for. So yeah, good to see them pulling all that crap out, save you a little bit of weight. Uh, fluid in the brake reservoir looks a little bit dirty. Yeah. Consider flushing that out, but otherwise, yeah, this engine bay, besides just being a little dirty, um, yeah, looks, looks like it's all in place. Um, I did notice uh, VIN stickers on both uh, both fenders. All right, moving to the undercarriage. Yeah, this is about what um, yeah a life you know twenty something years in uh, yeah Nevada will do. Um, yeah, super minimal rust. You just see it kind of like on the welds, and that's pretty much it. Even the fasteners have their original um, yeah plating and coating. Yeah, this is you know compared to like Utah. Um, yeah, this is much better. So. Just keep that in mind when you're, um, you know, what, thinking about what state to get your vehicle from. And then, yeah, great photo here of the, um, this is the bottom of the rear quarter panel. Looks like this is going to be on the passenger side. Um, yeah, this is a photo you want to see. And for those of you that are wondering what this is, this little tube. So this is one of the sunroof drains. You got to keep these things clear. Um, so there's going to be one on the other side. And then um, in the front, they don't really drain out like this. Um, they kind of drain like just into the the rocker panel, but yeah, you got to make sure those stay stay clear so the water doesn't back up into your cab. If you, especially if you park like underneath a tree, yeah, you should be doing that. You know, probably at least once a year. Um, I'm trying to gauge whether or not this spare tire. Um, it obviously the wheel doesn't match. This is a Toyota wheel, so that doesn't match. So yeah, a little bit of a bummer that yeah the spare um, yeah doesn't doesn't match the rest of the the wheels on the truck. That's how you can tell it's a fake overlander, <laughs> as if the spare doesn't match. Oh boy. Yeah, you might be like worried about that hole, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's normal. You don't want a hole like up here. <laughs> but yeah, that that one's normal. Good photos though. This is this is what you want to see on the undercarriage. This helps you make a really good decision, uh, yeah, on the condition of the of the truck. Uh, looking here at the transfer case, looks like some fluids getting out. Uh, hard to tell whether it's here or whether it's you know coming from the transmission. Um, I can see maybe a little bit of like a, a pinion seal leak as well here. Um, yeah, you know, so that might need some service. Um, and this, yeah, you know, kind of this is still the um, the transfer case, but you can see it's pretty wet. So it looks like yeah, something's leaking, leaking there. Again, if you can tolerate, you know, it doesn't doesn't necessarily look like it's bad enough to be dripping. So if you can, you know, tolerate that, just leave it. Um, and then these marks here on the side, this is where the, um, you know, the uh, hydraulic suspension stuff was removed, and yeah, you know, the the power connector for it. Also, when you um, yeah go through dirt and mud, you can see there's like pebbles and stuff. Yeah, be sure you wash this thing out. Um, you can end up you know over time, over years and years, decades, you can end up getting yeah corrosion building up and yeah ruining this body mount perch. Uh, good to see the little white residue too on the um, the sway bar bushing here. Um, that means those are being lubricated. That's a yeah sign of good maintenance. Um, looking just at the CV axle, doesn't look like there's grease all over the place. Um, so yeah, those are those are in good shape. 150 foot pounds. Yeah, so these are um, aftermarket upper controller arms. When you when you go above like two inches of lift, it's a good idea to yeah get those um, you know in order to get your geometry back in back in order. And then yeah, just noticing a couple missing clips. You know, always always have some of those on hand. You know, if this wasn't for the body damage in the the paintwork, I I might consider picking this up. I mentioned these earlier on, so these little pucks are to get that um, this cover, the skid plate down a little bit lower for that diff drop. Uh, again, that diff drop helps get a better angle for these CV axles when you uh, yeah put such a big lift on it. Look at those fat <laughs> covers on these Dobinson's uh, shocks. 
Yeah, lots of lots of good detail photos. This is great. Yeah, you really you really know what you're buying. You know, don't get too distracted with like the near ground here. Be sure you check out your rocker panels. Don't yeah, don't ignore what you know what's kind of you know either out of focus or not you know at the primary you know focus of the frame. Um, you know, regarding like off-road usage, I'm, um, you know, looking for like scrapes and stuff on here, you know, so this doesn't look, looks like it's been through some mud and that's, yeah, it's probably about it. Um, I do note this kind of windage tray underneath this one's kind of like a fiberglass, the little wings are broken off. Looks like on both sides, not a big deal. There's plenty of other attachment points. But yeah. Digging all the photos. Um, yeah, rear pinion sail, rear differential, those look all sealed up and dry. Very proud of their AHC removal. <laughs> All right, getting to the stickers. Uh, there's the original spec sheet. Timing belt kit. All right, cool. Yeah, this is a good looking truck. Um, yeah, too bad it's got a lot of miles. I mean, that's not a big deal. It looks like it's been pretty well maintained. Um, definitely like the look of it. It's a, yeah, it's a cool looking truck. Um, I don't know, it's hard to price it cause it's got, you know, it's got such high miles. Um, yeah, I think my gut says like 20, like 20 grand. Is that too much? Let's yeah, I think that's too much cause there's nothing, yeah, there's like nothing necessarily like unique about it. Um, although it is the later, the later year. So, okay, I'm going to, it's going to be above 20. Um, yeah. So let's, let's go. Yeah. Like 20, uh, 22,000. That's, that's probably a fair price for this. Um, given that the person bought it in July of 2020, I don't know. They're probably about even, no, probably not three years ago. Those, these 2006s were, you know, were pretty expensive. So yeah, they're probably losing money on the deal, but anyway, good looking truck. It's a shame that it had this damage. I think I'd, I think I'd pick it up. Um, but yeah, I'm not really interested in, in body work, but yeah, this could be a good project. Good, good car for somebody to pick up. So anyway, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm curious what you think it'll sell for and yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.